Mouth. Cat? Yeah. Cat? Give me a sentence. It's kind of dark. <laughs> 大家好，欢迎来到我的频道。很高兴你能来参观我的 YouTube。Have you ever found yourself in a situation like this where you're watching a movie and you really, really, really love watching, and you're like, I should make an inky deck out of this. Just gonna study it, gonna learn all the words, and then I am one step closer to that. Inevitable fluency that we all are attaining. Well, not really, because not everyone wants to be fluent. But what I'm attaining, I want to be fluent. And then you start going through that process, and then you realize, oh shoot, I'm in over my head. I have 500 Anki cards that I'm trying to get through, and it just sucks, and I hate life. Has that been you? If so, you are experienced Anki burnout. Yay! Love it. So many people seem to love Anki. So many people seem to hate Anki, and it's all just ah. No one really knows what's going on. Well, some people do. If this is you, check out my last video where I talked about what are some of the stages of Anki burnout and how can one prevent it. But that was more of a theoretical video. What is some of the psychological basis behind burning out? There's a utilizing a space repetition. System, especially Anki, and how can you prevent that from happening? But I left you guys on a little bit of a cliffhanger because I explained how can one shift their mindset to prevent Anki burnout? How do we approach creating cards and creating decks? But I never actually showed you how to make one. So today, that's what we're going to be doing. Today, I will show you how to make Anki cards for peak efficiency while also reducing burnout. And I mentioned this in my last video, but I prefer to do batch imports as opposed to making Anki cards every single day. Reason for that? You can check out my previous video as well. But it. Gives me less stress. I get stressed out if I feel the need to actually make cards every single day. So by batch importing, I only make cards after utilizing a resource. So for example, I actually found this really, really awesome、um, movie a couple of days ago, and I just binge watched it. I mean, you can't really binge watch a movie; you just watch it from beginning to end. But it's called Upcoming Summer, and it's a really, really great movie. A lot of times. It's harder to find things on Netflix because they can be a little bit more cheesy, especially if it's romance related. You'll not notice this when you start your、um, journey into immersion-based learning, especially if you're starting to sentence mine. The content that is easier tends to be more cheesy. So here comes upcoming summer, and I was hooked immediately. So what I'm actually going to do with this is now that I've watched the movie, I'm going to download all of the subtitles that are available.、Um, sometimes you can use online extensions.、Um, the one that I was going to use, to actually show you in this video, is called Language Reactor. It's been crashing, so I can't actually export the subtitles. So what I'll have to do is actually write them out by hand, which will suck, but it actually will aid in the language learning process,、um, and then make them into. Anki cards, batch import them, and then utilize them. And actually, for those of you who are subscribed to my Patreon, you guys will also have access to those Anki cards for this particular movie. And one of the perks of my Patreon actually is voting on which TV shows or movies that I will ultimately make Anki cards for and make it available to everyone. So check that out if you're interested in. But what if your question is, I want to make the Anki cards for myself? How do I go about doing that? So that's what I will explain today. I'll give you a step-by-step -step,、um, tour of how I make my Anki cards. So there's a couple of options that you can do to make your Anki cards. You can do it one by one, go on Anki, make a separate card for every separate entry, or you can batch import. There's tons of videos on how to make cards step by step. Individually, so feel free to check out one of those tutorials. But I'm just going to show you how I batch import. So the only thing you need for this is Excel and Anki, which is pretty simple.、Um, and it's going to be a very simple tutorial. Probably be a very short video, but that's okay. It'll it'll really explain and highlight how easy this actually is. So I actually have pulled up the Anki cards that I made for my HSK one through four. So this deck is available to everyone, and refer to my previous HSK Anki video、um, for a tutorial on how to use those specific cards. But this is the exact process that I went about creating those cards, creating that deck, and then releasing it out to everyone. And you may think, well, how did you make what is it four four thousand something cards without burning out? Like that's kind of crazy, isn't it? And the answer to that is not really. If you use <laughs> The tools that I talked about in the previous video. So again, just as a refresher, 
After I finished each HSK level, I made cards at the end of it as a act of review. I didn't make cards every day. Some people say make 10 to 15 cards every day and then review those, but it builds up over time. Even just finding good sentences it gets harder as you get more advanced, becomes more stressful, then you don't want to do Anki. So after you finish utilizing a resource, whether that be a textbook or a movie or a TV show, then sit down, study it again and make the Anki cards for that. And that's what's been helping me a lot. So this is exactly what I did with my Anki deck that I made for HSK one through four. I have it pulled up here. Um, and what you can notice is that this is a very, a very large, large file. If you do a lot of these, you'll have to use separate Excel files because it just gets, it, it gets very extensive and then Excel kind of has a tendency to crash a little bit. Cause think about it, you have four to 5,000 just separate entries, depending on the length of your movie, TV show, content or whatever. So just be mindful of that. You may have to make separate things for each separate content, but that's not that bad. It, it can be pretty useful to actually separate and have things organized in that type of manner. So I have my Excel file that I use for my Anki deck for HSK one through four pulled up and we can see here that there's a lot of text, there's a lot of different columns, but I'll go through each column individually. What you put on your Excel file will depend on what your card types look like in Inky, and I'll show you that a little bit later. But we can start off with A, I have the word in question that I want to review. In B, I have the sentence from which I took that word, and ideally you want to have a sentence that's I plus one, which means there's only one unknown word. If you're going into sentence mining, it will be more challenging to find those perfect I plus one words, which is why it's also very useful to find something at the end of utilizing your resource, because then you can go through it, you can learn as you watch the show or watch um, the movie, and then learn slowly as you review it, you'll be able to realize, hey, I learned a lot more than I anticipated. After that, in column C, I have the character sound audio. I get that from a plugin on Inky, which I will show later. D, I have the sentence sound audio, again, from that same plugin on Inky. Then I have the English definition of the word, not the sentence. I personally don't like including the sentence definition because it trains me to think from Chinese to English when they're not mutually translatable. But if you do wanna have that, you have to add that as a separate column and also add that as a separate field on Inky. After that, I have the pinning for this and I'll show you how to get really nice pinning, which will make it much easier. I also have the traditional on column G just because I wanted to have the traditional incorporated into that. And then on column H, I have the tag. The tags will be useful to organize everything that you have. So once you have everything imported into here, all you have to do is save the file. So file, save as, we're gonna save this file as a CSV. Then we're gonna go back to Anki, file, import, and then we're gonna click on the CSV file that we just made. So hsk1 listening, reading, running CSV. Open. And here you'll see that there's a lot of different options available. And this is where it's important that your card fields match your Excel file. The type here, this is what type of Anki deck are you going to use? If you look at type, you will select what note type that you've already created, which you want the Anki decks to resemble. The card type will have all your different fields that you have incorporated into it. The different fields correspond to different tabs on your Excel file. So it's very important that you choose the correct file type, the correct note type. So here we're gonna select, these are all the different card types that I have currently. Um, I have listening, reading, writing, and also the basic ones. I'm gonna select listening. The listening ones have different fields selected for it as opposed to the reading and writing. Um, so just make sure you're very clear on what card type you use. If you want a larger tutorial on how to actually make those different fields, make those note types, refer back to my Inky deck video that I created, which also goes through that in more detail. And then deck. You can have multiple decks. Let's say you want to add these words into a deck you already have. You go to deck, click the default, and then either add a new deck or you can add it to a currently made deck. So we'll just add it to the default deck. Um, you can ignore the field separated by comma. You can ignore the lines. You can ignore everything else. But now you go to field mapping. So field mapping is where you tell Anki that you want column A to be what field, column B to be what field. This is again why it's important to make sure you know exactly what you're doing for each 
column on Excel, and now you can translate that to Anki. So if you remember, column A was just the character. So field one is going to refer to the character, right? Field one is character. So we're going to make sure that field one, which is column A, is mapped to our character because that's what our character is. Field two is a sentence. Column B is now going to be the sentence, which is correct. Field three, which is column C, is character audio. Field four is sentence audio. Field five is English definition. Field six is opinion, traditional, and tags. So I already made sure that this was all mapped together, but you have to be very clear or else it's going to import wrong and then it's just gonna be so annoying um, to figure that out later on. So everything is all good then I can just click import and it will import everything for you. So you can see here that now we have appear twice in file. So Anki is not very great at importing things that are duplicated and oftentimes it thinks something is duplicated but it's actually not. So just make sure that there are no duplicates when you import into Anki. We can close and we can browse through it and now we have all the different cards that we have here and they're again separated by tab, which is very, very useful, very beneficial. And if we go into the card type, we can see, again, everything is imported correctly. We have the character in the character spot, we have the sentence, the sentence spot, we have the audio and the audio gray. We have the English definition, we have the pinning, we have the traditional, we have the tag. This is what the card looks like. So this is the front, we have the character, we have the character audio, the sentence audio, the French preview, the back preview, which has our sentence, um, the pinyin, the character definition, the traditional, the audios again, and then a stroke animation for that. That's all we really need. Once you get all of your stuff done, once you finish a show, you can just make the cards in Excel, which tends to be much easier. Um, then Anki and batch import them and then utilize them in your regular routine. But you may be asking, well, how do I get to that first step? How do I make this Excel file? How do I get the audio for all of these things? And how do I actually get the pinning for everything? So when I first, mm -hmm. so what I first did to make this Excel file is one, change my keyword to Chinese and simplify it so I can just type everything. On column A, I just typed in the character. Column B, I typed in the sentence. Column Column C and D, we have the audios, right? I actually leave the audio for later because I use Anki for the audio. Column E, I have the English definition, so I can just add in the English definition. Column F, this is the pinning, right? Pinning can be very hard to enter in by hand if you have hundreds of cards, but you can also batch convert this as well. So the way that I batch convert is I take the sentence, because I only do the pinning for the sentence. Let's say I want to batch convert these sentences, copy, and then you can go into a new um, Chrome window, have a Chinese folder, and then you can go to Pinyin Converter. This is actually very useful. So what you can do is just copy and paste all of the sentences here, right? So I have all the sentences. They have different um, functionalities. You can either use tone marks, tone numbers, no tone, so you can do tone marks. You can also do the most customary reading or all available readings. Customary just means what is the most used form of this. Some words have various pinnings based on what words they're accompanied with. All available readings will give you all the different possible ones. I prefer to use the most customary readings because it just cuts down the amount of time they have to go through and edit, but you can also use the all available readings if you want. So we can see that every single sentence has now been converted, copy and paste, all of this into your Excel file. Now what I ended up doing in Excel was adding the spaces and changing up any um, errors that it may have. Again, some words change with their pinning depending on the context of it. So I would go through it, add in the different spaces, um, and if there's anything I need to change, I would do it directly in Excel. It's much easier to change it in Excel than it is on Anki. One thing you can also do to speed up the process is download um, Anki add-ons, which do a lot of this work for you, but I found that they ended up crashing. And if they crash, then you kind of pretty much lose everything. And also in order to utilize those, it's harder to batch import your cards 
maybe I just don't know how to use it well, but I was never really able to batch import and then still use the functionalities. I would have to type in each word individually and then import it into Anki. And Anki is just much slower than Excel is for a lot of these things. Okay, so now we have the basics of the card down. We have the pinning of the card down. How do I add the audio? We go back to Anki. Let's say I want to add a new card. So we'll add a new card. We'll put it in the listening portion of it. Let's say, give me, give me a character. Give me a word, David. In Chinese? Yeah. Mao. Cat? Yeah. Cat? Okay, we'll, we'll do cat. Mao. We'll do Xiao Mao, which is a kitty. Give me a sentence. Putting you on the spot here. It's kind of dark. Can you give me a less dark one? Okay. So I want to raise this cat. I want to rear it, right? So this is what it will look like if you actually make the card by hand. Xiaomao, you would import it as a character. You would write the sentence out. It can get pretty annoying if you actually write the pinning by hand. So it's much quicker if you do the batch um, conversion with that website that I showed and also just import it from Excel. Oops, that's on the wrong field. Pinning, English definition. This is a kitty, right? So how do I add the audio? Once you import all of your stuff from Excel, pretty much all of these fields will be complete. You just won't have the character audio and the sentence audio imported. So what you can do, click this little speaker button. The audio that I use is from Awesome TTS. This is a plugin. You can just download the plugin on Awesome TTS and then you can add your own audio to all of your cards. And then it will have Xiao Mao here. You can preview and hear what it sounds like. Xiao Mao. And then you can click record. Xiao Mao and it will add it as your character audio. Now, one thing to note is you have to highlight and also copy the word in question or the sentence in question that you want to use. So let's say I want to do the sentence. If I just go to sentence audio, click the speaker, it's gonna give me Xiaomao again because it didn't tell it what thing do I actually want it to convert into audio. So we can just copy and paste the sentence, um, go to sentence audio, click the speaker, and then now we have the sentence audio for sentence. I want to raise a small cat. The voice that I use is the Chinese Mandarin Simplified. Um, I thought that her voice was the most pleasing, but there are, are a lot of other voices that you can use. I use the Microsoft Acer um, form of this. The Microsoft Acer is one that I felt was the most um, clear and also handled the wonky tones a little bit better, especially for Tone Sandy, if something changes, depending on the context. However, I do pay for a small subscription for TTS. It's not very expensive, but if you don't pay for that, then you may not get all the features available or all the voices available. But you just click record, and now it's there. Then you can just add the tag down here. Again, it's really annoying to add the tags by hand, so if you just import batch import with Excel, then that will already be, be filled out for you and you add it and there you go, you have your card. But that's pretty much how I make my cards. Again, you find content that you find enjoyable. You watch through all of it or read through all of it and then after you're done, study it, find the words that you want to make an Anki deck for, write it in Excel. Write the character, write the sentence, write the English definition, Batch, convert the pinning if you want, um, and then you can import it into Anki. In Anki, you can add the sentence audio using awesome TTS. And that's about it. That's how I make my own Anki cards, and that how is, that's how I was able to make so many cards in so little time. It did take a lot, though, to make the HSK one through four, but if you're just using it for your everyday content, it's, it's much easier to incorporate it into a more regular routine. And then you don't have to worry about, ah, I need to find words. I need to find sentences that I can import into Anki now or else my knowledge is gonna go down. You don't need to worry about that. So you can take Anki as at your own pace. You can use it and incorporate new words when you feel ready to add new words. It doesn't have to be an everyday type of thing. But that's personally how I use it. I haven't gotten burned out so far. And if you are interested in any more tutorials of this type, maybe I can go a little bit in more in depth. I don't know, we'll see. There's a lot of other people making better tutorials than I am, but if you're interested, then let me know and I can make some more about that. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you enjoy using Anki without burning out, hopefully. Let me know if this was helpful and beneficial. If not, then I don't know. It was helpful for me, so. But I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye, Jen.